welcome to Artists. My name is Virginia Bozak. I'm here today at the Fine Arts Gallery, which is managed by the Livonia Arts Commission. Our featured artists are students from the Livonia Public School Systems. And with us today to tell us all about the exhibit and the art programs there are Heidi Posh and Julie Bowalski. This is the 37th year that we've done this um, Fine Arts Festival at the library. And it takes an incredible team of art teachers, administrators, um, up, right up to our superintendent to support our arts program K-12 across the district. Each school is represented. Um, we have nearly 600 pieces of artwork here. And that's in addition to each school having their own art show, um, usually in the spring, to really showcase what the students have done and learned. Um, and that takes support within the schools, but also out of the schools with our families, really um, showing that art is important to them and their children as well. We actually had to, um, we had a wonderful problem several years ago in that this show was so well attended that so many people were here, it started to become um, a fire hazard. So we've had so many people really show, community members, parents, um, uh, fellow teachers that aren't art teachers as well, just support us in the arts and the importance that it has on the students. So that's a really wonderful thing here in Livonia. And the quality has maintained through all those years too. Um, and we're really fortunate to work in a district that is continuing that. We have wonderful support from the dis at the district level, um, from everything from building administration to um, district administrators. And this Fine Arts Festival is a wonderful example of that. Everything is matted on an actual map board, it, very well displayed. We have a great relationship with the library. And so I think that our administration has really been instrumental in that. I teach high school. I teach um, clay and jewelry classes. And I have taught everything in my eight years. I've been in 14 schools, <laughs> and I've taught K-12. Um, this year I'm teaching um, all elementary K-4. So, but I've done it all, at lower, upper, middle school, and high school. At the secondary level, we have three-dimensional classes like, like clay and metals. Then we also have mini two-dimensional things like painting and drawing, art fundamentals, photography, I think ceramics, yeah, ceramic sculpture, mm -hmm. and then at the at the elementary level, at the elementary level, um, what's offered for Livonia is um, a basic overview of all the mediums, two dimensional and three dimensional art. Um, we run the gamut on um, drawing, painting, um, ceramic sculpture. It's a um, it's an introduction to get students introduced to all the different areas of art that they can then take as they move on to secondary. Um, we focus on the, elements, the elements and principles of design in the elementary level. Um, in kindergarten, it's really an, a basic introduction. As they move up, it gets more and more specific um, as to um, the intensity of what's presented to them. I think art is a really important part of a student's education for several reasons. One, I know at the secondary level there tends to be a lot of emphasis on students, how they perform academically, how they perform in sports. Art is something, our students come from every walk of high school life. So we have students who excel academically and we have students who don't excel academically. And I think it's such an important part for them emotionally. We have so many students who don't see success in other areas, that art can really bridge that and bring them a success that I think some other, some other disciplines aren't able to do in the same way. Um, I've noticed the importance of art actually that bleeds through to all the other academic areas as well. Um, the process of art making is the same as um, the literacy process is reading and writing. Students are learning to see, they're learning to read, they're learning to write, and they're learning how to communicate. Um, when they create a work of art, there's, there's a message there and a communication, and then they have to discuss it, they have to talk about it. Very often they write about it. So they are, in creating a work of art, they're learning math skills, 
they're learning literacy skills, they're learning communication skills, um, and it crosses over to every other area in the curriculum. And it's a really nice blend of, um, of solidifying knowledge in other areas as well. It also helps them, the, the more art instruction that they have, improves math test scores, reading test scores, because of the problem solving that's involved in making a, a work of art and the creative um, solutions that have to happen when you are creating a painting or a sculpture. It does happen quite often that students are intimidated, especially at the secondary level. I think at the elementary level, and you could speak more to this, they're, they're a little more open, you know, they're not so worried about what other people think or they're not so worried about failing. I think at the secondary level, which is, you know, middle, through, middle school through high school, they're more concerned about not doing well. And that's both for, you know, acceptance by their peers and then also, you know, thinking about college and university in and, and, and that way. I tell those students that art, you know, there's certainly some people are born with more natural talent. They come to us with a lot of different levels of experience. But at the same time, art is a skill that can be learned. There is a lot of skill. And so it's like anything else. If they, you know, if they work hard, if they try, if they listen to instruction and give it their best, they'll do well. You know, they might not be, become a performing artist or, you know, maybe not even be able to be at the level of having a piece in here, but they will do well and they will learn something just giving that effort. That's a question that I get at the elementary level, <clears throat> excuse me, at the elementary level, usually by parents mm -hmm. who are concerned about yeah. it. Um, at the K-4 level, that question doesn't come up often with students. Every once in a while, a fourth grader or fifth or sixth grader will ask me, how do I get an A? How do I get a four on this project? Um, and I don't have as much skill as say Heidi does and I don't have the experience, how do you grade art comes up often. Um, most often, again with elementary, with the parents, they'll come in at open house or curriculum night um, at conferences and they'll ask how do you grade art when it's subjective. Um, my response is what Heidi says and we're all here to learn. And we grade on a continuum and we look at a body of work to see growth over each individual student and we don't judge students side by side. You look at the individual growth of the student and everybody is there to learn. It is a skill that anybody can learn um, and practice makes better with that. So and that's why we're all in class is to learn. I love when a student creates something that they're proud of. That's a wonderful, a wonderful moment. When you probably. see that spark. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's yeah. probably my favorite, favorite thing. It's, and at the secondary level, that's, that is really true and really wonderful. You, you can have students that are um, maybe not shining in other aspects of the curriculum and, and other aspects of um, school, and you know that when they enter your classroom, they feel accepted and they feel successful, and, um, and self-confidence really can go up. Um, and they may not get that anywhere else and that's a really powerful thing to allow a student to have that. Um, in the elementary world, our, our schedules are um, on a 45 minute rotating basis and student classrooms come to art every 45 minutes, which is a very busy day, but every class that comes to art and comes to my classroom comes with bright shining eyes and they say, I just love art, it's my favorite subject, it's my favorite part of the week. And to know that you can bring that to a student is such a joy. It's, it's really a joyful job. The projects that I enjoy the most, that I enjoy most working with students, are ones where they have to put something of themselves into it. So one that I've enjoyed lately, and I really like, I'm the kind of person, I'm like many of my students, where I get bored pretty easily, so I change it around quite a bit. Lately, we've been doing some, um, in ceramics class, we've been doing some profile pieces, ceramic profiles, and I actually trace the student's profile, um, trace a hand, and they have to combine that into some sort of container and write something that's meaningful to them. So I really enjoy seeing that because you really learn a lot about the student, you know, by their choice, in um, whether they use song lyrics or they use a poem, 
That, that's really interesting. I enjoy that. So the, the personal aspect of art is something that I enjoy with projects, and I try to, to instill that. Um, at the elementary level, I think my most favorite thing that I've been doing lately is um, big collaborative projects. It's fun to have them do the individual projects that are hung at the art show, but um, the past several years I've been really excited about having them work in teams and work collaboratively to build um, a large paper mache sculpture or work as a team to do a large mural that then becomes a prop for part of the art show. Um, several years ago I had students in teams build like eight foot long crayons um, out of paper mache that they could use at the art show. They, we, we actually made them work so that they could be um, sketching in a giant paper mache um, sketchbook the night of the art show. They were all kind of, it took three of them to really kind of draw the night of the art show. Um, that was really fun. They still talk about that. And this year they worked on um, some, some, they were like 10 foot long um, paper mache Chinese dragons that are hanging su suspended from the ceiling. So some of those big, powerful, collaborative things have been exciting for me to watch the communication between the kids and to see that, like you're talking about, that personal mm -hmm. aspect, different, different comes out when they get to work as a team and, and that teamwork and collaboration that goes along with that. So that's been exciting for me. State funding, it's been such a huge issue. It's really hurt our students. Mm -hmm. the, the funding has really been cut so dramatically. We're able to offer a lot less than we were in the past, less in terms of material. I think the district has done as much as they can to keep us really stable. And I think, I, people ask me this often, and I really feel that we are not, we're not suffering any harder than any other department. So right. while, while art has been affected, I think the district really has done as much as they can to supplement that in many ways. And I think we're very fortunate to have really wonderful, hardworking art teachers who I know people are doing a lot more going out and soliciting companies and trying to get private donations and trying to supplement what we're not able to do budget-wise. So I think, I don't think it will, I think it absolutely affects the department, but it won't, it won't end the department. Well, and I think it's important too to go back to what Heidi said about, I don't think the, the wonderful thing about working for Livonia Public Schools is they do hold the arts in a, in a very high esteem along with every other academic area. And when Heidi said, we're not hurting any harder than anyone else, we're not cut any harder than anybody else, it's, it goes back to um, how valued the arts are in our district. Because sure, it affects us, it's affecting everybody, but we still have wonderful, amazing programs. It's still offered to every elementary student at every grade level. It's still offered to every secondary student should they elect it. And the course offerings are still very um, varied mm -hmm. um, in, in terms of what they can choose at middle school and at the high school levels. And that's a really fabulous thing to, to maintain. We do have very hardworking art teachers who go above and beyond, above and beyond their school day um, to make sure that it's a quality program for all of our students here. And we do have the support of administration. It's wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed the program. There is a new exhibit every month at the Fine Arts Gallery, which is located on the second floor of the Civic Center Library. And tune in again for artists.